Hello and welcome to an episode of our show, The Film Digest, with your hosts, Ren Jimenez and Henry Gonzalez. Today we'll be giving the scoop on Hollywood, what movies are out now, and what the Digest recommends to watch over the weekend. So with that out of the way, let's, let's start, start the, the show. show. So Brandon, this weekend has proven to be, this last weekend has proven to be a pretty, pretty disappointing box office weekend. We haven't had a lot of movies that have been making a lot, and I mean, just the elephant in the room, I think there's been one movie that's been a huge disappointment in its box office earnings, The Expendables 4. Expendables is yeah. a really popular franchise, right? right? Now the fourth movie's come out, only real fans, I guess, of maybe Sylvester Stallone or Dol Dolph Lundgren came to see it, yeah. didn't really attract that many people as an action movie. Yeah, I mean, the show has always, I mean, the franchise has always had uh, huge earnings. It's always been known as, you know, the box office turnout, the, the most reliable franchise to go to. I mean, it was, uh, when it was, you know, created by uh, Sylvester Stallone, it was supposed to be this huge all-star cast with, you know, all these actors, All these, like, yeah, getting together in a film. huge action blockbuster, and now it took it's kind of it's kind of died out, don't you think? I mean, yeah, I think it now, definitely took like a, a wrong turn yeah, in terms I mean, of where it wants to go. Yeah, exactly. And now, especially, we have we have new actors, right? I mean, right, a new generation of actors taking over for all those old huge names, right? Because back then, and it's still the case today. Um, you know, it, there's a time in Hollywood where uh, everybody's decision to go to the movie theaters for the weekend was just based on who's what starring in what, right? Who, who has the hottest cast, who has the best ensemble. And Expendables 4 has proven us completely wrong with a huge eight million failure, you know? Mm -hmm. Eight million dollar failure. I mean, yeah. There's no excuse for how low this has gotten. No, nobody really predicted how low this could go. and. I mean, other than the poor audience reviews, everybody expected at least, you know, 20 million in its opening weekend, don't you think? And it's just hit low. Yeah. It's a bit disappointing, but... In other news, we have The Nun 2, which is leading the box office. Yeah. Pretty good horror film. It's definitely connected with... Um, the Conjuring connected franchise. connected with yeah. The Conjuring, yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, that one was released like three weeks ago. I think it's still been winning the box office every week since. And so we got yeah. A Hunting in Venice, which is Murder on the Orient Express, the third movie to come out from that franchise yeah. now, making a, a successful trilogy, so that's, yep. that's pretty good. I mean, good. The, both of those movies have been doing better than Expendables 4. Mm. And I don't know, I just, I find it more, you know, I find it more, I guess, unexpected that um, audiences would care more about less, you know, more standalone movies than, you know, big franchise, big actor movies. Well, like I would say that, for. I would say that in this era of films right now, horror films are exceptionally popular because anybody can make them. And, right. and whether you're getting your box office earnings, if you're just, you like movies, or you're a filmmaker, you gotta take into terms how many people would watch horror movies. It's almost like exactly. satire, right? You would, go, you would go on a date to watch a horror movie, or if you're a filmmaker and you want inspiration on how to do a scary scene, you would watch a horror movie. Right. You watch a horror movie in theaters, you gotta see what captivates the audience. And a lot of people are following the horror movie scare. That's a well-known fact, but a lot of right. people that find cult classics in horror movies. Exactly. Plus, it's getting to that time of year in the fall where it's, you know, almost Halloween. People are watching more horror movies now. And, I don't know, I guess you see that this following in trends, um, more than just horror movies between, you know, Haunting in Venice and, uh, the, Nun and the Nun 2. We're seeing a lot of, uh, a lot of more independent movies, or not independent movies, but I guess more standalone movies getting more attention. Because now, I think we're at a transition point in Hollywood where audiences are going to care a lot more about quality over quantity. And 
quantity in the sense of like how many actors are doing this, how much money is this gonna make, how much money is put into this. Also, now think we're gonna see more quality movies. I mean, that that would be the reasonable uh, takeaway from this weekend. I also think that a big factor for it is what you said. It's about franchising as well. Right. When people make one good movie and then the audiences love it, they're only gonna want a second movie. And while that may be good, it's also kind of ruining the, the integrity of the movies. You're making one movie, and then all of a sudden audiences want another, so you make another, and then you see that the other made really well as well as the first one. So studios tell you to make another one, and then it turns into a whole like yeah, franchise, exactly. and it just gets yeah, it just gets old over time. Yeah, but we're turning with A24 especially. This has been very big in the last three or four years. A24 has been producing movies independently, like independent movies go to A24 as a safe haven for producing and distributing their movies. And I like right. the aspect that we're all doing that now. And A24 is becoming bigger in business, you know, with Sofia Coppola and Priscilla coming out soon. Right. It's going to be just one hub, maybe going back to how films used to be before franchising. I hope that we go back to a, a place where I remember um, a movie showcased this, a character went into a character like got up from his office and he was just like, I'm going to the theaters. And they were like, what are you gonna watch? And he's like, whatever's playing. I feel like we're going back to that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the Hollywood system's gonna eventually implode on itself if it keeps reusing old franchises. And I think we're just gonna start seeing uh, some more of that. But I mean, speaking of A24, mm -hmm. recently uh, The Smile got a, a uh, Second movie, right? Right. No, no, not a second. Like, a, they announced that there would be a sequel coming out. I think next October. Oh. Uh, I mean, October 2024 is a pretty set date. It's not bad. And uh, I mean, the smile too. I mean, it, the smile was originally, or when it first came out, it was originally one of the biggest earnings for A24 ever, mm. and it happened to be one of the most profitable movies of 2022. So, I mean, it would make sense that this is getting greenlit for a sequel. But I think you're starting to see, like you said, a bigger fan hub around these movies made by A24. And The Smile 2 is going to be, you know... Could they repeat the same franchising mistake? Too early to tell, but, you know, we need more movies like that. We need more movies that will follow this new formula that's being set. It's very, it's very cool how horror movies come in their selected time. As we know, Halloween, September to, Nove to early November is when they, they're making those movies and putting them out in theaters. And then it follows into like a, a, almost like a Christmas aspect. So you definitely have that pattern. And that's why they chose October 24, 24, 2024 as the date, because of horror movie. And I find that, that interesting. I mean, movies always have to follow the seasonal trends too. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, getting off of horror movies now. Uh, recently, there was another green light for a new project, uh, theatrically. A musical adaptation of Mean Girls. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, Mean Girls was a fun movie. I, personally, am not a big fan of musicals, but, you know, a lot of people are, and this movie's definitely up there as one of those projects that was waiting to happen. I think this think? could be, I think this could be good. If you put it in terms of a musical, I mean, a lot of people can resonate with that. And that's, that's different to me a lot. Like, I feel like if they were to put on a stage play, that would have been a very interesting approach. Like, do a stage play first. Yeah, but I mean, and that then, could also follow, like, the theatrical release, you know? Yeah. If you, if you would I feel like, I don't know, because Mean Girls is a very interesting type of movie. You know what I'm saying? In terms of what they were going to do now with the musical, they could have... I don't know. I feel I mean, like they could also they could also adapt it to like our times today. Because when Mean Girls was released, it was meant to be like this, you know, obviously like another teen movie, but it's it was meant to be like more reflective, right? Of more how the time was exactly right for like kids, for high schoolers. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it was always supposed to be like this ridiculous, you know, fun plot to follow. But you know, Mean Girls is uh, definitely a reliable. A reliable movie to make a new, uh, a new adaptation of, and in the form of a musical, it could get some more attention to that aspect of theater, of you know, cinema. 
and you know, I could help build uh, some more you know, attention, at least for Mean Girls. Well, I mean, they I did can't it speak first. For many other franchises. They did it first with um, SpongeBob. SpongeBob the Musical. You heard that? Bro but it's a Broadway production. That's why I feel like it would have been more practical to do like a Broadway a, adaptation. A pro yeah, a Broadway adaptation, and they could have adapted that into a different type of style, into a movie. But I feel like this might be good in, in today's in today's culture. What we're doing, right? adapting it into a musical, could be a good idea. I just wanna. I wonder if um, yeah. Lindsay Lohan is gonna star in the movie, or not? Probably not. Probably not. But she but might I have mean, a role in the movie. We'll see. I mean, yeah, we'll see. Anyway, let's stop looking at movies that are next week, January 12th, uh, October 2024. Let's look at now, for All this right. weekend. Coming out this weekend is going to be The Kill Room, starring Samuel L. Jackson and Uma Thurman. The Kill Room. Yep. This is going to be their first movie together since Pulp Fiction, believe it or not. And, I mean, it looks interesting. I like the trailer. It was funny. It was, you know, interesting. I think if I can recall the plot, it's about a hitman and an art dealer teaming up for a money laundering scheme. That's funny. I mean, it sounds like an intellectual script, right? It's a hitman, a hitman's bodyguard, Samuel Jackson. That's funny. It's probably going to be Sam Jackson. <laughs> Though if Uma Thurman's the hitman, then I'll definitely watch it for sure. <laughs> no, no, even more interesting, if Sam Jackson's the art dealer. Oh my can goodness. Can you imagine? He'd be a lot more quiet until the hitman. No, no, but I mean, yeah. That'd be a very interesting watch. I think... But yeah. Yeah. I mean, the trailer says otherwise, so whatever. <laughs> whatever. That would have been a lot more interesting, though. Um, but yeah, The Kill Room looks interesting, and I think, I'm, I think that's one of the movies I'm definitely going to have to watch uh, for this weekend, if anything. But yeah, I mean, on other news, uh, we have another movie called The Creator. That one's looking very, very interesting. A lot of people are saying that it's fantastic, and honestly, Judging from the trailers, from audience reviews, from critic reviews, everything looks amazing. Like it really does. It looks like one of the biggest highlights of 2023 because it's a, it looks like a huge sci-fi blockbuster and at the same time it looks like really, really visually striking. I'm glad John David Washington is doing more work. Like I like, I like his choice and in, in, in style of movies as an actor. My favorite movie I think he's done is Black Klansman. Yeah, it's definitely my favorite movie. There's also movies like Tenant, which is just like a time jump, like yeah, time yeah. jump by Christopher Nolan. Yeah, don't try simplifying it into a sentence. That was a very complicated script. Yeah, but you know, John David Washington, his father is Denzel Washington. I think he has a lot. He's an up and coming actor, but right. even more up and coming because he's already made it to that A list yeah, actor status. Yeah, exactly. A list actor status, but. He's, I think, in the future, he's going to be one of our primary actors, one of our famous actors. Right. And you can go so far back as Malcolm X when he was... I mean, very, Denzel Washington. No, Denzel Washington, yeah, he was in Malcolm X. Right. But John David Washington, near the end of the movie, appears. This is a fun little fact. Oh, cool. So, yeah, it stretches as far back as that. Yeah. I mean, in 10 years, we could be looking at John David Washington the same way we're looking at Denzel now. Yeah. 10, 20 years. I like but, it. I mean, yeah. I mean, the creator looks to be one of his best movies yet. I mean, it's directed by Gareth Edwards. Same guy who did Rogue One. Looks very, very stylized. Looks very, very cool. I think the plot's about a futuristic war between man and AI. <laughs> we have another one of those scripts. But the twist is that... Um, John David Washington's character, uh, main character, uh, is a special operations soldier mm -hmm. who's, uh, who's got to hunt down a, an elusive man called the Creator. And supposedly he's the architect of the AI that threatens mankind. And, you know, now it's got to be, you know, this big manhunt chasing the Creator down and putting an end to the AI war that's ravaging the world. But I mean, from the trailer, it also looks like we're going to explore what it means to be man, what it means to be AI, right? We're going to see more of that. We're going to see existential drama. We're going to see, you know, sci-fi drama. We're going to see a lot of action, too. You know, that reminds me of, that reminds me of um, the theme in movies, the humanization of, 
anti-human objects or the anti-humanization of human right. objects. It's a very interesting concept, especially with this one. Is you have a fight between human and AI. I feel like there's a character in movies, and I think you know what I'm talking about. Like that robot that is like your companion. He's like a, he's like always like a dog. Well, I mean, you always you always have one of those, or you have like Terminator, Skynet, that, yeah. AI that like he has wants that to animal like destroy the world. To you him. either have you know Skynet who wants to destroy the world, or do you have a friendly AI that friendly wants to help? Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, I like I like that plot uh, that plot theme on you know who's more human than human, or could AI be, you know, as sentient as us, as real as us? I think with... I mean, you you see plots like that all the way, like, linking all the way back to Blade Runner, mm -hmm. right? And then, you know, the newest Blade Runner too. Uh, you have a lot of movies exploring that theme, and I think this movie's gonna do a great job of doing that as well. But yeah, with that, we're gonna get into a, another matter. The WGA strike officially ended. Right. on September 25th. Yep. And it's I mean, fun. It's, it's pretty great news, you know? I mean, SAG after is not done yet. Um, I think they're still protesting the matter of AI taking over jobs for actors, but, you know, at least WGA has reached a conclusion. They've been striking since, I believe, May 2nd. It's been 160 plus days, I yeah. think. It's been a long while since any of them have been working, and that's like 10,000 plus writers, so. Definitely that's definitely range. that's definitely uh, you know affected Hollywood over the over the last months. It's delayed a lot of movies uh, from their initial release dates, and it's definitely you know costed a lot of money for all of us. You know. Yeah, I like um as well. I saw on Edgar Wright's Instagram he finally released his executive produced show, the animated show of Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. I am. And he finally released a teaser for it, and it's coming on Netflix really soon. So, very cool. Yeah, thanks for the but yeah, writer yeah. strike being ended. Yeah, you're you're seeing a lot of uh, great news following the WGA strike ending. Um, and I mean, yeah, I mean, you're seeing a lot of writers coming back to work, but actors, unfortunately, are still striking. Maybe someday they'll stop. <laughs> with that, I mean, with that being said, I think we covered about everything that we have to look forward to this weekend. We have three great movies that uh, need to be watched this weekend. You know. Mm -hmm. And next week we're going to be seeing a lot more movies and a lot more news. Make sure you stick with us so we can catch you up on your news uh, for Hollywood. My name is Brandon Jimenez. And my name is Henry Gonzalez. With that being said, we'll catch you up in Hollywood next, next week. week. Hey. 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 Hey.